I'm going to call on Dr. Robert to come and share the word of God. Put your hands together. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm God surprised to you this morning because there's things God wants to speak into your heart. Speak to Australia as a nation, as a people. Because God's got something glorious. But that depends upon you catching the vision. My people perish for lack of vision. God wants the body of Christ to have a vision. I'm talking of a vision from God for a new Australia. And I believe that vision has already been released to Pastor Daniel here. That God has given the vision to ignite this nation and prepare this nation for their visitation from on high. God has a glorious place for you. Each one of you has the place in the divine economy. Each one of you has been called. Each one of you has been set apart. You have come into the kingdom at a time such as this. What time? A time for Australia. A move of the Holy Spirit, unprecedented in history. An end time move of the Holy Spirit this is not going to take place in the four corners of the church. Because sinners don't go to church. This is going to take place in the marketplace. This is going to take place in the public square, in the political arena. This is going to be a vision to gather the people of God that are out there, that are yet to come into the kingdom. We who are in church must go out into the world, into the political world. Jesus said, go ye into all the world into the political world, into the social world, into the academic world. We must go to their world and bring the good news to their world. For so long the church has sat back and said, so the public square, the politics are dirty. They're dirty because you're not involved. They're dirty because you're not engaged. We let the devil run every city, every nation. We let the devil control our destiny. Jesus said, occupy till I come. That means be engaged till I come. We are an occupying army. Jesus overcame the devil, he conquered, and he said, now I give you power over all the powers of Satan. I give you authority, I delegate to you authority to establish my kingdom on the earth, to be my messengers, to be my hands and my feet. He gave us the authority to rule and to reign in today's world. We don't have to wait. He has made us kings and priests unto him. We are already made kings and priests by the Lord. We have been brought into the order of Melchizedek, which is a kingly order to dictate to the world, to tell the world what God says, because he owns the world. He owns America, and he owns Australia. He owns New Zealand. He owns every nation there is on the face of the earth. And he has blessed us in every nation for a purpose. For such a time, the church has been so bound to their own religiosity. A religion without power, without vision, an empty religiosity. Men of God were in the marketplace. Moses delivering a people by the anointing. He saw a burning bush, he became the burning bush. He went back to his people and said, let my people go. Australia needs a man, he needs you, he needs every woman, every, every person that knows Jesus to now stand in their place together to speak to this nation. We have to tell them, let my people go. We have to stop their plans and their agendas to destroy this great nation. The power to do it is within you. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The power to define the future is not given to the devil and to the world. 
The power to define the future is given to the sons of the kingdom because this is our father's house. Australia was not made by the liberals. Um, Australia was not made by men. The Australia that's been formed is being formed by men. But God has, has placed you in this country at this time so that you could hear his voice and obey his voice and stand up and be counted. Amen. Many times we, 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 we say, well, that's not my thing. What is your thing? My thing is to obey God. And God so loved the world that he gave his son. To the world. To Canberra. Out of Canberra. Do you realize that we're not only given the gospel of salvation, but the gospel of the kingdom. Yes. What is the gospel of the kingdom? Meaning God is, is establishing his kingdom on the earth. Meaning that God is raising up kingdom men and kingdom women on the earth to define the, the moral values of this country. Amen. The Judaic ethics that have been lost. This worship of the living God. Do you realize that when, when Israel opened itself to other religions, the worship of Baal, the worship of other religions, and they opened their, their doors to all these religions to come in. When they, those religions came in, they took over, and the judgment God came upon them because God was no longer with them. They wanted to be like all other nations, so they worshiped the Baal. They followed other nations. They lost their un uniqueness. They lost their place in the divine economy, and they were thrown out. Australia needs to realize that God has placed this nation in a very strategic place in this hour to influence the world. Australia, the southern land of the Holy Spirit. God wants to move and show the nations of the world what the people of God can do when they take God serious. You can only take God serious when you realize you are in serious trouble. Because leadership is not born in good times. Leadership is born in crisis. Amen. And I believe that God sent a man, Daniel, to come to, to Australia because he was looking for someone who could catch the vision. Mm. Looking for someone who would carry the vision. Why did he send him here? He sent him for one thing, that is to carry the vision. Amen. What do I mean by carrying the vision? God gave him the vision for this new party. That is to carry the vision. But he's not the one to carry out the vision. Amen. Moses carries the vision, and the elders carry out the vision, and the people carry out the vision. Amen. Everybody's got a place. One man carries the vision, and the rest of the people carries out the vision. Because there is a participation for every person, a place. Moses just carries the vision and communicates the vision. He vision casts. He tells the vision what he has heard from God, what he has seen. And he tells the people, and the people catch the fire, and they catch the vision, and they run with the vision. Now the vision has been explained, the vision has been laid out, now we are looking for people to carry out the vision in every city, in your neighborhood, house to house. God is doing a new thing, a new party, a new vision for a new Australia, and Australia separated under God. And Australia, that is not compromised. In Australia, that is not open to pagan religions. Amen. In Australia, that is set apart and set on fire for the Lord. Amen. A new Australia. I pray that as you listen to me, I learn something as I speak around the world. That it's never taught. You can never teach people. Yeah. It's caught. Amen. I'm praying that right now, some of you are sitting, you're catching on fire. You're catching the vision. Because when you catch the vision, the provision will be there for the vision. You cannot have a vision from God without divine provision. His name is El Shada, the God of too much money. <laughs> too much money to do everything that you need to do. There is no need for you to say we don't have enough money. It reminds me of my friend Ron Nachman calling me from Israel where I built a, a leading smart city in the world. Brought all the Russian scientists to Ariel to build the leading smart city. And you can go there and see it. 
and uh, it's an amazing city on planet Earth. And uh, I'm working with Ron Nachman. Of course, you say, how did you get to build a living smart city in Israel? Well, my mother is an Ethiopian Jew, and God spoke to me when he sent me to America. He says, I sent you to America for Israel. I sent you to go and prophesy to Benjamin Netanyahu. So I go to Benjamin Netanyahu and I prophesy to him, hear the word of the Lord. You have been gathered back in the land of Israel, not by the resolutions of the United Nations, the Security Council, 242, 181. You, are, you don't exist because of the will of the, of the United Nations. You exist because God says, I'll gather you from the nations. I am the Lord. I'll bring you back to restore the ancient places. All the ancient places are in the West Bank. Jerusalem, Shiloh, Bethlehem, Calvary, Every one of all, every one mentioned the scripture in the West Bank. And God says, I will gather you from the nations. When I gather you from the nations, you will restore the ancient places. Every ancient place is in the West Bank. Amen. So God drew a line in the sand and said, when I bring you back, will you listen to me or will you listen to the Security Council? Will you listen to the United States of America? Will you listen to me rather than listen to me? And so God says, go and rebuke Benjamin Netanyahu, and tell him, that says the Lord God, I am the Lord, we have brought you back. It's not about the United Nations, the Security Council. It's not about the Holocaust and the, the guilt and the shame of the West. It's because God Almighty said, I'll gather you back. And he's gathered you back to restore the ancient foundations, Shiloh, Bethlehem, Calvary, you, all these ancient places that are in the West Bank. God says, that's where I want you to build. The, 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 the nations of the world said, no. You build on the other side where there is no ancient foundations in disobedience of God. So I said to Benjamin, and I will hear the word of the Lord. The day that you will negotiate land for peace after I've come talk, talk to you and tell you this, this shall be a sign to you your government will collapse. Then you know the man of God has come and has spoken into your life. He looked at me, I love that guy, he looks at me and says, Robert. Have you not read in your Bible that we stone our prophets? <laughs> I'm talking a great sense of humor. In other words, they're just like, you know, just get lost, just get out of here. <laughs> well, he came to Camp David to the United States of America and negotiated land for peace. On his way back to Jerusalem, his government collapsed. And he called me, he said, Robert, I'm ready to listen. <laughs> And ever since then, I met with Benjamin and Netanyahu many times, talk about a lot of things. And I gave him another prophecy. I said, hear the word of the Lord. You shall again be the prime minister of Israel in a very critical time. The Lord is not finished with you. First time was to show you that it's all about him, not about our government, the United States of America. It's all about the ancient of days. We are a mighty nation, but he is the almighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now he's back again. According to the word of prophecy I gave him. You see, what has come out of that? What has come out of that is that now we have a Torah sender in Ariel. Where by executive order, 40,000 school teachers have to go through it. To learn for the first time in 2,000 years what it is to be a Jew. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. God still speaks. Yes. He still speaks. Amen. He told me, I've made you a prophet to the house of Israel. He said, I want you to go back and see General Ariel Sharon. And he said to General Ariel Sharon, that says the Lord God. I said, I don't have an appointment with General Ariel Sharon. God says, when I send you, I go before you. I make a way where there is no way. I open doors that no man can shut. Just like that. By the way, I will, I will make sure that all these things I'm talking about, Benjamin Netanyahu and all that, I will email the pastor all the pictures, confirmations, so you can see it. Because it's true. So he, the Lord says, write the, say, the word for Ariel Sharon. And tell him, these are the prophecies that are being fulfilled. And you have to obey them. Because it's not about the roadmap from the quartet. Oh, by the way, I met with the people of the quartet, with Tony Blair's people. 
in, in Jerusalem to tell them it's not about your cottage and the roadmap. That not the roadmap. That there is a roadmap in the Bible. Amen. Do you know there is a roadmap in the Bible that nations and people and churches are blessed based upon what God says to Abraham? Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. That's God. He said it. I believe it. And if you bless them, you will be blessed. Period. It's unconditional. You want to be blessed? You just start blessing them. Churches that are blessing Israel are being blessed. Because God is a covenant keeping God. I went to Israel with all the prophecies concerning Israel in the last days. The roadmap to the end of time when the Messiah, Mashiach ben David, shall come back to the city, Yerushalayim. He's not coming to Melbourne. He's coming back to Yerushalayim. Oh, the holy city. Woo! One of these days, we're going to split the heavens open. And our work on earth will be over. And we'll be caught out to meet the Lord in the air. Then shall we ever be with him, the dead in Christ will be raised. We which are alive will be caught out to meet the Lord in the air. Woo! What a morning, what a day, a glorious day. The return of our Lord. Hallelujah. You know, he's preparing Israel for this hour. For the coming of the Messiah, that is holy city. Where he says, I'll put my name here for it. So I got all the prophecies, and I went to Israel with 30 other people with me, group pick two of and uh, I'm like they're saying what, what are you doing with that I said I'm gonna give this to Ariel Shalom I said you have an appointment I said no I got an appointment with the Holy Spirit <laughs> he, he's gonna orchestrate that he's good at orchestrating that I got a phone call in my room area of Jerome's office wow. are you Robert Mawira Dr. Robert Mawira I said yes sir he said the general wants to meet you at the library three o'clock tomorrow Boom. And I tell my, my group, we're going to go out to the library. So what are we going to do to the library? It's not on the itinerary. He said, don't worry. Big surprise at the library. <laughs> then the tour, the tour guide and the tour driver and they're driving us there, looking at you. He said, what are you going to do at the library if tourists don't go to the library? I said, there is a big surprise for everyone. And there in the library was the general waiting for me. And I, you will see a picture of me handing him the, the prophecies and telling him, you will be Prime Minister again. He said, absolutely no. I've already been indicted on war crimes of what happened in Lebanon. I'm going to hang. My political future is over. It will never happen. If it happens, I'll know that the Holy One of Israel, the God of our father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has sent you. We have not heard from him in 2,000 years. Blessed are you who are sent by our God. I said, you will know that he has sent me because you'll be Prime Minister. Six months. I said, these scriptures, you must read them. The day you negotiate land for peace, he will strike you like in ancient times. I'm just a mailman. I deliver the mail. When I deliver the mail, I'm gone. Whether you read your mail or you don't read your mail, you throw your mail away, that's your deal. I, I'm, I'm done. I've done my part. I just delivered the mail. Here's the mail. Take, take these promises with you. So I gave it to them. In six months, he became prime minister. And he calls me. He says, okay, I got it. I said, I'll come back to tell you one more thing. The day you move the Jews from the land God gave them, he, like in ancient times, he will strike you. Well, the day he did it, he removed the, 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 the people of God from the Gaza Strip. And that day, he had a stroke. And he was in that stroke for six years because his time was not yet. And everyone at the Knesset knew that I'd given him a word. That the day you do that, the Holy One of Israel, who owns the land, the land belongs to him. Amen. Why is Australia blessed? Australia is blessed because of the 800 light fighters who liberated Palestine in preparation in preparation, in preparation for God to open that land for the Jewish people to return again. 
the greatest appointment since the birth, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. This was the greatest miracle of biblical proportion. That day was a prophetic day, a defining moment in history. In nearly 2,000 years, when God chose the Australians and New Zealanders to break through the enemy lines. <laughs> 50,000 British allies flee, and the Australians turn around to face the enemy. Now, only God could have done that. that. There's never been a history of something like that happening. It happened because God ordained it. It happened because God wanted to tell the Australians, you have a place in the commonwealth of nations. You're in the family of men. You have a place, a defined place, a holy place. You are a special people. You need to rise up right now. We need a new generation of light riders riding across Australia and riding across the world to call the world to himself. Because Australia is blessed because they were the ones that God used to fulfill biblical prophecy. Amen. That's why there is a great future for Australia. I've been praying and asking God for information because God has put it on my heart.